Okay, this is, uh, this is part two of the 20 meter dipole QRP antenna build. All the parts came from Home Depot or Lowe's with the exception of the PL239. Okay, this is part two. We're finishing it up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solder this up here. And I like to uh, tin these first. Now these uh, these wellers get pretty hot if you if you turn them on the high heat and it doesn't really need that. Just put a little bit of tinning in there is all you need just to get it hot. Put a little tin on that. Okay. Got my wire here. This will be a trick. Like I said, I'm, I would normally do this outside in my workbench, but I'm trying to get this on camera, and this has the best light. All right, uh, this is making me mad now. Let's see what I can do. Always find a third hand somewhere. Make sure I get hot here. There we go, we're hot. I'm going to use my uh, snips and get a little of that, give it a little of that. Okay. Alright, so before I solder this on here, <laughs> the way this is going to work, and I'm going to have to leave this very uh, loose. I may have to do this from the other end, but let's see. Okay, I'm doing this loosely. Okay, that looks like a mess now. Don't worry about that. This is why people use workbenches. Yeah. See, I almost forgot a step. Going, man, you got a mess here, but you'll see how this will work out when we get it fixed here. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Third time's a charm, right? And this was a little easier 20 years ago when I had eyeballs. There we go. Alright, so there's our center conductor. Center conductor goes down right there. Okay, now I did find this was a quarter inch and my driver is a quarter inch, so we should be in good shape to screw these little duty dudes down. Not going to do that one all the way. The other one in here.
cool thing is, it looks like it's not, not both of them are not going to line up right. That is not a problem. We have the technology. Okay, now I'm going to tighten all of them down except the one that's opposite of this wire. where I'm going to tie my wire to. That's where I'm going to tie the other wire to. Let me grab him up here. Alright, so that's this dude here. So, if I was going to do this a little nicer, I'd put a terminal lug on here. Again, this is temporary. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap Come back here just a little ways. I'm just gonna wrap this screw wire around the screw. Just like that. And I'm gonna put a little daub of solder on there. Get my third hand out here again. here to get rid of the excess. Alright, so now then we'll see if I can get the same through here. over. Alright, so now I can stick these duber daubers together. You want to do this in a well ventilated area. This is not a plumbing fitting. It does not need to be watertight. This is temporary. And the main thing I want to do is make sure that hole on this one lines up somewhat with my ah. perfect. Here. 
trying to figure out why I'm doing this now. I actually ordered an a antenna from MFJ. If you've ever ordered anything from MFJ, you may be able to uh, understand what I'm talking about when I say they are terrible. <laughs> not, not necessarily their products, but uh, I gotta tell you, it's already been on order for four weeks. You know, and at some point in time, you just got to give up and say, "Hey, I gotta, I've got to get on the air," and you have to do what you got to do to get on the air. Okay, so there's my strain relief there. Okay, there's my connector, ground, center conductor comes through here, right there. There's no. Uh, there's no other connections. A lot of times you'll see folks take these wires and run them up here and wrap them around and solder them and then they'll take the antenna wire and run them up here and wrap them around and solder them. I don't need to do that. I'm just coming straight straight from the connector into my antenna leads. Okay. And that seems to be pretty tight. That's about all you need. Alright. Just going to close this guy down. I'm getting high here. Getting high on video. All right, now let's go down here to our other end. To our little elbows. Now I think on these guys, I'll probably put a little electrical tape on them. get about, I don't know, four inches there. Alright, there we go. Put a bit of a tape on there. This tape is not to make it waterproof or anything, it's just to kind of hold it together. Keep it from untwisting. And I usually uh, bend the little tag end over so that I got somewhere to I got somewhere to grab it and start peeling it off if I don't have to adjust this. Okay. So there's my first end. It act like it wanna pop off there, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit. Give it a little bit right here, maybe just to keep him in place. Like I say, be nice, stay in place. And again, put that little tag in right there. All right, there we go. That'll keep it from falling out while I'm mounting it. Go grab the other end. You could measure these tag ends. Um, I'm just going to try to guess them. It's not going to be perfect. I'm probably going to have to adjust. I do have a tuner on here, which is going to help, and I'm going to try to get those oh, about four inches. Uh, just try to eyeball them the same. Okay, let me uh, first of all put this one on here so that it doesn't fall off. around here. Again, this is just to keep it from untwisting. Okay. So now, there's my two ends of the antenna. 
with a insulator on it. Here's my antenna connection point. I can use this top piece here as the strain relief so I don't have a strain on the coax connector down here. And two loops around through those little ears and that'll give it plenty of strength. Okay, now the next thing we got to do, just go outside, hook it up and see if it works.